from CBS Texas, Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson on switching political parties. And I don't know too much about this guy. It's come across my feed that a mayor in Texas switched parties. But this is actually pretty crazy if you think about it. I'm under the impression this is an active mayor who decided to switch parties because clearly the Democrats have become completely outrageous. But my name's Eric. This channel is called Report and Opine. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I'm absolutely begging you. I'm begging you, please. Come on, please. It would help me a lot and it would cost you nothing. But if you wanted to help me even more and spend money, you would buy my book, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued on Amazon.com. That link will be in the description. I had to do some inventory and I, I realized that, you know, I became a Democrat at 18 when I voted for the first time. I yeah, and then you came to your senses and I can almost be certain that the Democrats absolutely hate this because not only are they clearly trying to turn Texas blue, which whatever, that's part of their job, but... This is a black guy. I turned 48 this year. And, you know, 30 years is a long time. And I'm not the same guy uh, 30 years later. You're not the same guy. And we can be sure that the Democrats are certainly not the same party. Well, that was Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson responding to our political reporter, Jack Fink, when he asked Johnson why he chose to leave the Democratic Party and become a Republican. Back in December, Mayor Johnson told us that he started thinking about switching parties in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder and the movement to defund the police. Tonight. Oh, yeah. I like how they just slipped that in there. The aftermath of George Floyd's murder. Yeah. OK. We we're quite clearly under mob rule. And that is that is up for debate, at least. We are learning more about that decision in a brand new article from our media partners over at Texas Monthly. Alex Samuels sat down with Dallas's. And just to be clear, Texas Monthly is not by any stretch of the imagination a conservative outlet. But they say the real heart of the Democratic Party is with the criminals. And that is true. Mayor recently, she is joining us tonight here to chat a little bit more about this. Uh, Alex, thanks for being with us. Uh, Mayor Johnson made this announcement last year and you asked to speak with him, but he did not put you on his calendar back then. So why do you think he decided to finally speak with Texas Monthly now about this? Yeah, you know, firstly, I think that he wanted to share his story, which. And here we I mean, this really has nothing to do with anything, but it is quite clear that the trend amongst these weirdo journalist class hacks is the thick rim glasses. You see Angela Rye doing it. A whole bunch of people I'm blanking now, but Angela Rye is notably one who's like, oh, oh, Marilyn Mosby, I'm wearing big thick glasses. I'm super smart. And she's doing the same thing. But that's a different point is very personal to him, but he also wanted to make sure it was told accurately over time since the party switch. Yeah, he wanted to make sure that his story was told accurately. So he talked to a journalist. OK, he has spoken more to local media outlets, but I think part of him was, you know, excited and maybe a little bit apprehensive to go on record with such personal details about his upbringing and some of the criticisms he says he's received even before becoming the mayor of Dallas. You know, in the end, I'm really glad he granted us this interview because we got to talk about a lot of topics I believe are important to residents of Dallas. But I'm also glad that he felt comfortable enough to open up about his personal life in the way that he did, because I think readers walk away from this interview with a more full picture of who Eric Johnson is and what it is he stands for. Sure. And Mayor Johnson, we know he has a political background. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that uh, point and if this announcement you think would. OK, uh, and maybe they'll get to this, but I truly do not know how this works. I mean, imagine if you run for mayor as a Democrat and you actually win. And then you decide to switch to Republican, which I am not against at all, because obviously the Democrats are completely insane. But that would probably upset some people. And you just pretend. I mean, I guess you're the same guy. But I mean, how does that actually work? Play into. And maybe that's proof that we don't need these political parties at all. And I think it was uh, shout out Bryson. I think it was Bryson who said that some of these policies should be brought forth. It just in the language of of the actual policy and not the sponsor, not the political party, not the person behind it, because that way it will keep the general population from being come from short circuiting because they've been brainwashed by the media for the past two decades. And, you know, without, without mentioning who or what party is behind it, they can take these things rationally. 
to a potential uh, political future. Is this is this a pivot for his political career? Sure. So uh, before getting elected mayor of Dallas in 2019, Eric Johnson served for nearly a decade in the Texas legislature as a Democrat representing House District 100, which is, of course, anchored in Dallas. But he announced in September in uh, an op-ed in The Wall Street Journal that he's now a Republican. So one thing we know is that here in Texas, voters don't register their party affiliation necessarily. You can say that you're a Democrat and then vote in the Republican primary and vice versa. So Johnson says he didn't want Dallas's residents to continue assuming he was a Democrat. And there's no way to really make clear you're switching parties without making that news public in the way that he did. He told me, too, that he wanted to make that announcement himself. He didn't want some pesky reporter like me probably digging up his voting record and seeing which primary he was voting in. Um, to answer your question, though, about whether the party switch is a tee up for something else, Johnson told me repeatedly that the this is not. He said he plans to retire from office and has no intention to run for anything else when his term ends in 2027. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. Fine. But it, this is good, right? Better late than pregnant. But it took you however 40, 50 years to snap out of it. And, I, and some people still can't do that. But if you're in Texas, you, you became a Democrat at the age of 18. And it took you so long to realize that they're completely out of touch, to put it nicely, of course. And maybe you can get away with that in California or Illinois or Portland or whatever. But, I mean, you're in Texas, bro. And obviously, Texans are not a monolith. This much we know. But it is a far cry, right? Even a Texas Democrat would be further right than a California Republican, right? I mean, this thing is a complete mess. And he thinks his next step will become more clear when we get to that point. Yeah, I guess uh, it's one of these uh, wait and see type situations. Uh, you know, Texas Monthly's headline for the article, there's a quote uh, that reads, the real heart of the Democratic Party is with criminals. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you think led to that quote. Right. So he shared with me that during the 2020 protests following the murder of George Floyd in. Oh, here we go. Once again, they just throw it out there. I mean, look, obviously, we know by now that the entire court system is completely corrupt. We may or may not have been living under mob rule since O.J. or even before that with uh, Rodney King. So you can keep just blatantly just throwing it out there as oh, it's just it's 100 percent a murder. And that's just not true. Ask Candace Owens about that. But we know at that point in time, people were so wound up and so brainwashed by the extremist media that it just be. I mean, if you say it enough times, it becomes true, right? It's not a lie if you believe it. It's not a lie if you believe it. Minneapolis, that he faced protesters at his house and calls from certain Dallas residents to defund the Dallas Police Department. And it was around that time he also told me that he came to realize that Democrats were, you know, in his words, pro-offender or... So that's, that's when he snapped out of it. That's when he decided that they had overplayed the hand indifferent toward victims of violent crime. I don't know if there was necessarily one watershed moment for him, but he told me that public safety is his number one priority, both as mayor, but also as a father of two, three young kids. And he believes that the Republican Party holds the same values uh, that he does on that topic. Okay, well, our thanks to Alex Samuels with Texas Monthly. There's much more that Alex was able to interview Mayor Johnson about. You can read all of it. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, this makes sense, but bro, you just can't. I mean, for I mean, look at San Francisco, look at California as a whole. People are absolutely fleeing. And I know it's tough to do, but that's just how bad it's gotten. And you cannot be an adult in almost any state. You cannot be a fully grown, fully functioning adult, arguably supporting a family and still pretend that the Democrats are going to go to bat for you at all.